Chapter 1. September 15th. I just got a new spider book, and the first sentence is, Spiders are serial killers. The Jack the Rippers. The greatest and most famous predators of the insect world. This may be true, but it misses the point. The incredible thing about spiders isn't that they're killers. It's all the amazing ways they go about getting their food. People don't understand spiders. They think of them as bloodthirsty vampires. The truth is, spiders make the world a better place. They try to give us a bug-free environment. Spider experts estimate that the insects eaten by spiders in one year weigh more than 50 million people. Spiders are pretty fearless. They eat mostly insects, but they'll also eat fish and amphibians, lizards, young snakes, even birds and small animals. Most spiders use webs to catch their prey, but not all. Jumping spiders don't use any webs at all. They stalk their prey as slow and secret as a cat. Jumping spiders have awesome eyesight, which makes sense. They've got eight eyes. Tarantulas aren't web spiders. They only use their webs to line the burrows of their hiding places or to keep their eggs warm. I'm worried about Thelma, still not eating. My book says captive tarantulas don't have to be fed too often. They can go weeks and even months without eating, but... Bobby! Bobby blinked and looked up from the journal. Yeah? Time for school. Breakfast. Shake a leg. Bobby glanced over at Thelma. The tarantula lay scrunched up and motionless in a corner of the terrarium. She'd been like that for weeks, ever since Dad got the new job, which meant more money, but which also meant having to move from Naperville, Illinois, to New Paltz, New York. Not hungry he called to his mother. Come on, she called back. It's almost quarter of. You better put something into that skinny belly of yours. Sighing, Bobby closed the journal and tucked it inside the bottom drawer of his desk. He bent down to his terrarium and looked at Thelma. So long, girl, he said in a quiet voice. Bobby reached in and gently touched one of the tarantula's legs. I'll see you this afternoon. On the way out of the bedroom, he slammed into the door. Again! He kicked it and yanked it toward him and lurched into the hallway. How long would it take before he learned that this door opened into the bedroom, not out, like the bedroom door back in Naperville? Bobby rumbled down the stairs. Strong breakfast smells in the kitchen. Coffee, bacon frying eggs. Morning, Breezy said from the breakfast bar. His sister's real name was Brianna, but a couple of years ago, she started telling everyone to call her Breezy. And everybody did, except for Bobby, who still called her Brianna whenever he wanted to needle her, which was about 10 times a day. Breakfast for Brianna always meant the same seat within reach of the telephone, the same scrambled eggs and toast, the same Ann Landers column in the newspaper. And now that she was in the 11th grade, a cup of coffee with milk and lots of sugar. A creature of habit. How can you drink that stuff? Bobby asked, eyeballing her coffee. Beneath his belt, his stomach made a strangled sound of protest. Hey, where's Dad? Your father's already at work, and I've already done my run, Mom said, smiling at him and sipping her coffee. She was wearing a gray sweatsuit with a white headband. So what are you going to eat? Nothing. You can't go to school without breakfast, she said. Studies have shown, Breezy said. Studies have have shown, Mom shot back, glaring at Breezy. You skip breakfast. You might as well kiss the morning goodbye. 
Kiss the morning goodbye. You might as well kiss the day goodbye. Kiss the day goodbye, Breezy put in. You might as well kiss your life goodbye. Bobby stumbled over to the toaster and put in a slice of bread. Ever since they moved to New York four weeks earlier, he hadn't had much of an appetite. A car honked. That's my exit cue, Breezy said, jumping up. She grabbed her books and kissed her mother on the cheek. On the way out, she bent down and kissed Bobby's cheek, too. Hey, he cried, twisting away from her. Wish me luck with tryouts, she yelled. Breezy was auditioning for her high school play, West Side Story. Break a leg, Mom called while Bobby tried to wipe the greasy kiss off his cheek. He stayed quiet during the ride to school while Mom made a small talk, tennis lessons, an argument between two nurses at work, Breezy's tryout. Bobby stared out the window. None of his friends in Illinois had even heard of New Paltz when he first told them he was moving there. It sure looked different from Illinois. He missed it, the flatness of the Midwest. It was hilly and wooded here in upstate New York. A riot of rocks, bushes, and trees. New Paltz had so many trees, you only caught glimpses of sky when you drove around. He missed riding bikes with Mike and Cody and Chad. All those afternoons when there was nothing between them and a huge dome of Midwestern sky. Bobby, he realized Mom was talking to him. She gave him a funny look. I said, have you made any friends yet? She said softly. No, nope. he cracked the window an inch. He barely knew of any of the kids' names. Well, that will come, she said. I shouldn't worry about you, should I? Hey, Mom, you're not working today, are you? No, it's my day off. Why? I was wondering if you could take me to the pet shop after school. Thelma really needs a bigger tank. I mean, she doesn't fit in there. She does. She needs to stretch out. Don't we all, Mom said. I've got the money, he said as they played, pulled into the circular driveway in front of the school. Mom leaned her head against the steering wheel and looked at him. All right, she said. Now that we've got a bigger house... I suppose Thelma deserves one, too. Listen, I'll be there at 2.55 on the dot. Don't dawdle. Okay. He swung out of the car and waved goodbye. Dad packed you an extra big lunch, she called after him. Okay, okay, he said, hurrying into school. Everything felt different in New York. The air felt strange. His clothes didn't quite fit. Doors didn't open the right way. Sentences, even words, came out sounding all twisted. Doddle? What genius invented a dumb word like that? Bobby had been assigned to Mrs. Ms. Terbaldi's seventh grade homeroom. When his guidance counselor had first spoken the name, he heard it as Mr. Baldy. And it came as a shock the first day to see a woman standing in front of the class. He figured Ms. Terbaldi was probably in her 40s. She was tall and thin with bony shoulders bent forward like, four, like folded wings. <clears throat> Bobby took the last seat in the fourth row and watched the other kids filing into the classroom. His school in Naperville had been 98% white. This school had lots of minorities. Looks like a healthy mix of blacks and Asians, Mom had said on the first day of school, making it sound like a bowl of human salad. One boy entered the room, slowly kicking his backpack in front of him. Ms. Terbaldi told him to pick it up. He did so, shuffled over to his desk, flopped down, and drew the hood of his sweatshirt tight around his head so his face wasn't visible at all. Another boy, tall with gleaming black hair, strolled over to his desk and shook his head, sending a spray of water from his hair all over the kids sitting around him. 
Mr. Hall, Ms. Terribaldi said sharply, stop that. Yes, ma'am, the boy said with a smug smile. So began the day. The Pledge of Allegiance was followed by the principal's voice running down the day's announcements, the school placing second an Odyssey of the Mind tournament, an upcoming invention convention, the new honor system, the seventh grade dance. Bobby tried not to listen. The bell rang. He walked the halls and went to his class like everyone else, as if it all mattered to him. English, social studies, health. Mr. Nysgoski was the math and science teacher. He had a crew cut, and he started each class with a short lecture. Today, he talked about living like a scientist. Then he handed out a thick packet of information with the words cell division printed on top. This homework is due tomorrow, he said. If you don't hand it in, I'll put a little zero next to your name in my grading book. All right? When you get two little zeros, mom and dad get a phone call. Is that clear? Whole class sighed. It was as clear as it was going to get. Lunchtime. He ate in the cafetorium, an enormous room that served as a combined auditorium and cafeteria. Bobby made his way through the line and bought two cartons of chocolate milk. Cafetorium, he thought. What a stupid word. Who came up with stuff like that? So far, the school lunches have been pretty awful. Today, there was a choice between an evil-looking meatball sub and a patty-shaped UFO, unidentified fried object. He felt grateful Dad had packed him a lunch. He grabbed a chair <clears throat> at an empty table and sat down. Hey, is this your ta our table? Bobby swallowed and looked up. He saw a black-haired boy. Bobby recognized him as the kid in the homeroom, who shook his head like a wet dog trying to dry himself. Two other boys stood beside him. Really? Bobby asked. I didn't see anybody's name on it. Yeah, well, we always sit here, the black-haired boy said, smirking. He was good-looking with regular white teeth. Bobby took an instant dislike to him. It's kind of like a tradition, Bobby looked at them, trying to gauge how much trouble they'd be. Mind if I sit here, he asked. The three boys looked at one another. Guess not, the black-haired boy scowled. The other two boys put their trays down at the opposite end of the table and proceeded to ignore him. That suited Bobby fine. He finished lunch and glanced at his afternoon schedule. Music, then P.E. You're not from around here, huh? The black-haired boy asked loudly. Nope. He's not from around here, another boy put in. He must be from nowhere, the boy snickered. I'm from Naperville, Illinois. You from Illinois, the black-haired boy asked, making the last part of the word rhyme with noise, Illinois. You like Da bears, huh? You like da bulls? I don't watch much sports on TV, Bobby admitted. You don't? He looked genuinely amazed. What kind of stuff you like? Bobby shrugged. Football and science? Science, the black hair boy repeated, glancing at his friends. The three of them shared a look before they got up to go. Well... We'll see you later, Illinois, the black-haired boy said. They started walking away. When they were not quite out of earshot, Bobby heard one of them say, that geek got to start saving up his money so he can buy himself a brand new face. The three of them looked back, cracking up.